Alright, hey guys, and welcome back to another uh, movie review. Today I am going to be reviewing the latest DC film, Shazam. Uh, I have to say, like, straight off the bat, I'm just going to say this now, that I'm going to not really do any spoilers. Um, there's a couple of things I'll hint at that might be a little spoilery, but I don't think anything I'm going to mention is going to actually be a spoiler as much as, like, you... Because you're probably, like, they, they weren't exactly secretive about it. It's stuff that they sort of talked about um, in the marketing and stuff like that. Uh, so just, just, you know, be warned if you really want to go in with a completely blank slate. But if you didn't care about watching every trailer and learning everything, then I'm not going to spoil anything at all. Um, and I also want to start off by saying that I love superheroes. But typically, I'm a Marvel guy rather than a DC guy. There's always been something about DC characters that I just have trouble relating to. I think it's the fact that they're the best of everything for the most part. It's like, world's fastest man, world's greatest detective. Like, it's always, like, stuff that's always, like, way beyond that I just... I, I can't quite connect with that. And... I found, of late, really, that their films are even harder for me to care about. And it's like, I mean, like, back in the day, like, the 80s and that Batman films and stuff are still fun. I don't exactly love them like some people, but they're still enjoyable enough. And I really don't like Dark Knight Rises, but I like Dark Knight, and I, I love Batman Begins. Of that trilogy, I love Batman Begins the most. Um, but lately, that stuff has not really done anything for me. Like, I thought, like, of the latest ones, I thought Aquaman was alright, but it was still a really fun movie. And I loved Wonder Woman, even though it falls apart in the last, like, half, like, last act. And I think part of the big problem there is it loses a lot of its thematic stuff. It doesn't just, like, there's two sides to the Wonder Woman problem. First is, it devolves into, like, a big, blasty, flashy CGI show, using powers that she really isn't shown to have the rest of the film, and it also cuts out all the themes that it was building over the um, entire course of the film. So it's kind of hard for a DC film to get me excited. The thing is, Shazam actually did get me excited. There was just something in the trailers that really spoke to me, Pretty much from the get-go, the first trailer I saw, I went, Oh, that actually looks really good. And I was actually eager to see it, and hopeful, although perhaps desperate is a more accurate term, that it would be good. And things were looking really, really good. And then I saw it. And I loved it. I, I have to say... This has perhaps been the most fun I've had watching a live-action superhero film ever. The only thing that beats it out is Spider-Verse, and that's if I'm counting all superhero films. Like, I love the MCU, I don't think they've had a movie this fun. They're always still that grounded in reality thing that kind of cuts that out. There's just, in Shazam, there's this real warmth and fun to everything that happens, and it never undercuts the darkness that they, they put in there at times. In fact, at least for me, it improves those darker moments by the contrast with how light everything else is. See, for me, this is a great example of a film that knows exactly what it is and does whatever it can be to be that. It just goes, this is what I will do, and this is what I'm going to be, and I'm just going to do that. That's all I'm going to do. And I mean, part of that is the fact that, like, they, I, people were concerned when he was cast, but Zachary Levy, or Levi, I've never known exactly how to say his name, but he was a brilliant piece of casting, I think, because he brings wonderful charisma and joy as Shazam. He's just really, really fun to watch in everything he does. And then he's offset wonderfully by Mark Strong, who, once again, is playing a villain, and one with a really dark intent here. So it's this real contrast of the light of um, Levi Shazam and then the darkness of Strong's um, villain. And I've talked a lot about child actors over my last couple of reviews uh, through Us and Dumbo. And this is another movie that kind of hinges on your child acting. 
Um, this, this is a thing where, especially after I, the flat performances, at least for me in Dumbo, Shazam gave me good performances from young from the young cast. I, and that's not to say that all of them were like perfectly amazing. There were some that like, or at least at moments, were not as um, as great, but. They all did at least a decent enough job that it never pulled me out of the film. I was never sitting there going like, oh, okay. I think maybe once, but even then, like, it wasn't a big deal. It didn't, like, completely show me out. Dumbo, it really cut me off when I noticed it. I was just like, oh, okay. This, like, this kept me in, and it could be other stuff, but it kept me in enough. And, I mean, this is a superhero movie, so action is kind of an important thing. And... The action's pretty damn strong in this, and it's definitely of a Superman vein, when you come down to it. So it's a lot of, like, flying around and then smacking each other into stuff. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this, um, that Shazam, for me, succeeds... I said that a lot for me. Um, Shazam succeeds where, to me, Man of Steel failed. And that's in the fact that Shazam manages to build up both its hero and its villain... In terms of power, so you believe these are really strong, powerful people, but they don't have to destroy a city to do it. Even when they're smashing each other around, like, stuff gets damaged. They don't have to blow up an entire city for you to go, oh man, these two are really, really strong. You just get it, really, really simply. It's just like, yeah, no, they're strong. I totally understand. Like, they could totally do more than probably they would shown to do. And... Okay, there are moments that look a little goofy, especially in uh, the kind of, like, uh, flying combat stuff. Sometimes doesn't look quite as nice, and that's one of those cases where I don't know whether it's because it doesn't look real, or it's a case because it does look real, it kind of tricks your brain into thinking it's not real. Because there are things that do that where, if you actually look at, like, like a jetpack in real life, it looks fake. Because things don't quite work the same way as they do in movies. It's strength. People complain about CGI making things look fake. Sometimes the CGI version is what you assume it would really look like. And the real version you think is CGI. Um, but then also, talking about Goofy, there are monsters in the film. Uh, this is one of those spoiler, not spoiler things. Because uh, it's sort of like, it's mentioned a lot in the marketing. But, yeah, there's these monsters that look a little silly at times, and I especially thought so the first time I saw them. But other times, they're actually quite well done and unnerving, and it kind of makes me suspect that what was happening was more effort was put into some parts of the film than other parts of the film, which is totally a thing that happens a lot, where it's like, okay, this scene, we need to put a little bit more work in, or we don't have time to get to that. That scene matters a little less, so we just don't have time to put in the effort there. And that's not necessarily, that's not a bad thing in itself. Like, that's just how this stuff works. So, I can't, I, I, it doesn't look great, but you can't completely fault the film for it. And I will, I, another thing that I, I, since I saw it, I saw it last night. Um, and then I had to go to bed and go to work and stuff. And, and um, this morning. But ever since I saw it, I keep thinking about this one moment. And it's, I think... Shazam has what is the one of the purest moments I've ever seen in a superhero film. And it's truly fitting of the titular hero of Shazam. Um, I don't want to give too much away about it, but you know the scene in Amazing Spider- uh, yeah, it's Amazing Spider-Man where Spider-Man pulls off his mask and gives it to the kid to help him. It's more pure than that. Like it's this thing of like it makes sense for the character, and it just, it gives you so much, like, hope in one moment. Like, this beautiful, it's this beautiful, beautiful moment. At least, like, the way I saw it, like, I loved it. And, I mean, Shazam made me so happy as well, because over the last year or so, there's been a lot of movies, namely things like Venom and Predator, that I sit there and I'm watching it and I'm thinking... This would be better if they went this route, or if they went over this way, or did this. And then they just waste that opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. It just, they throw it all away, and I'm sitting there going, like, why didn't you just go left instead of right? That kind of thing. And 
Shazam didn't do that? In fact, every single thing that I ever sat, I sat there and went, oh, it'd be better if they went this way. I wish, the, uh, I wish they were going to go this way. And then they would do that. They just kept doing that. And literally, there was like one that I was like, there's no way in hell they're going to do this. This is just too much. It, there's no way they're going to be able to... Like, they just wouldn't do it. And then, and then they did it. And it blew my mind. I was like, holy crap. That was, it was like something I thought of really early in the film. And I went, oh, that'd be so cool. But there's no way. And then they did it. And that just kept happening. This is a movie that just keeps on giving. There was, there's also another thing that is very spoilery. That it's like... St you would not have gotten in a Snyder-led universe. Because it was just too not dark. There was a whole thing recently where he talked about, like, Batman would absolutely kill if you think your heroes haven't committed atrocities, you're a moron kind of thing. So he wouldn't do this stuff. And he's kind of missing the point of superheroes there. And this is the next thing. is like, Shazam reminds me of why I love superheroes. Snyder gives everything that I kind of don't like about superheroes. So, like, with superheroes for me... There's these messages of hope and strength and willpower and helping and all these sort of things that, to me, are really, really important. And they're really, really clever. But too often or late, it seems like superhero properties are just throwing that all away in favor of dark and gritty. And in the end, all they end up doing is twisting the heroes into mockeries of themselves. And that's what I like. Part of my problem with a lot of the Snyder stuff and the early DC stuff is that what they—that's what they did. Superman never acts like Superman. He's this dark, gritty, kind of like tortured version of Superman. Which, for an alternate, like there are alt stories about Superman that are really cool, like uh, Red Sun and stuff. The thing is, you need Superman before you can do that. You can't just do Red Sun and expect it to work. You need to know who Superman is. And I think part of the problem is, today, we haven't got that Superman anymore. We've got Dark Gritty Superman who's not saving his dad from a tornado, even though he totally could. Um, we, so, we're stuck. Like that's what we're stuck with. We aren't getting the Superman that would do all this stuff. They tried to do that in Justice League, but it was too late. We'd already seen Broody Superman for two films. And then Batman's always one that's sort of teetered on that edge, and it becomes the bigger problem because it's so easy to push him over, and that's what everyone keeps, like, they're done. And it doesn't seem like they may even change that. And that's why I love Shazam, because not only doesn't it, does it not do that, it rejects that idea outright and uses the superhero message of hope as a beacon in the entire film. It's basically what the entire film is built around, it goes, no, we're not going down that path. It re just goes, no, that's not what we are. That's not what we're doing. We're going to do what is best about superheroes. Ow. And I freaking loved it. I mean, in closing, really, like, if you have even a passing interest in superheroes or even just good films, then you need to go see Shazam. Like, I was hopeful for it. But it blew me away. And there is stuff in there that I think, like, is just magic. Literal magic. So I'm giving it four and a half stars. Because there probably is a better version of this film that could exist. But I'm not exactly sure what they could have changed. Like, I don't know what they could have added to make it even better. But anyway, like, thanks guys for watching. Um, if you like this review, leave a like down below. Uh, if you didn't like it, you can leave a dislike if you want. But leave your comments and let me know what you thought of Shazam if you've seen it. Um, even if you, you haven't seen it or you're not sure if you want to see it, let me know why you're kind of like not sure if you want to go see Shazam. Um, it'd be kind of cool. To do. I always like seeing that. I know I'm surrounded by people that kind of wanted to see Shazam. Very few people I knew that didn't. Um, so it's cool to like, especially get an actual reason for why. Um, and then also make sure you hit that um, subscribe button and keep up with all the reviews and gameplays and stuff we got going. And I'll see you in the next video. It's just, it's weird. This thing is just lacking in imagination as a whole. It's a child family film based on a rather imaginative animation from the 40s. And it's remade with a modern day and a modern sensibility. And it's just the most unimaginative.